Hello and welcome to the Gary Dunn Show for what feels like the middle of January in uh, 2024, but it's actually the uh, homecoming week edition of the Gary Dunn Show. Uh, on the first day, I think we've hit 30 degrees. Uh, cold morning here in the studio in California, PA, but, but Coach, it's always good to have you in here, especially uh, after a big win on Saturday in conference. Um, but first off, what about this weather? All year we've been talking about the weather's been great, Crazy. weather's been great, and then, I mean, it's not raining, but... Uh, it's like 10 degrees out there. Yeah, it's, it's a little chilly, but I will take it because I saw the forecast for Saturday and it's supposed to be 68 and sunny. So we'll take a little cold weather on, on Tuesday and Wednesday if we're going to have a nice Saturday. Yeah, well, t that's a little teaser for later. There you so go. big day Saturday coming up. So uh, stay tuned for the show. Uh, but first, Coach, let's, let's look at this past Saturday. Uh, once again, um, we're in the middle of PSAC play, and every game is, is a dogfight here on it in Seton Hill yeah. despite their record. We talked about it last week. Uh, they weren't going to go anywhere, and they were going to give 100%, and it, it, it really showed that was a dogfight on Saturday night, but your team um, got it out of a very uh, yeah. tough win on the road. Really, really proud of our guys, you know, to, to bounce back um, from, a, from an obviously tough defeat the week before on the last play of the game. You know, a lot of times in coaching, you talk to your team about that could cost you two games. When you lose a game like that, you know, in, in the magnitude of the rivalry and everything, you know, we talked to our guys about all week, don't let that one cost you two. You know, our culture and our character didn't allow it. You know, uh, a year ago, they ended up losing the, after we, mm -hmm. we won a heartbreaker, they ended up losing their next game. Um, and, and our guys just didn't allow it. We had a, a really good second half of the week of practice. And our guys went up and played. And I, and I told them all week, Seton Hill's a good football team. Their record isn't indicated how good they are. They've got an extremely tough defense. You know, they're, they're senior guys all over the board. Uh, the defense they run is totally different than anything you see at any level of football. Um, I've, you know, I've never seen a defense quite like theirs, and they're really good at it. So we knew it was going to be tough offensively. I was really happy with the way we played three quarters defensively. You know, we really shut them down uh, for three quarters. And then, you know, at the end, we give up a couple plays in the fourth quarter. But, you know, never felt like the game was in question. But give Seton Hill credit. They, they showed up to play. They played hard the entire time. They kind of got momentum a little bit there in the fourth quarter. But, again, was proud of the way we finished the game. Well, I'm glad you talked about their defense because I, I feel like I've seen a lot of football in my life, both college, pro, and high school. And there were times out there I was looking at their defensive formation. I – I had no idea what they were thinking or what they were trying to do. It just that's just testament to your staff and your offense to, to prepare for that. Yeah, it really breaks a lot of your rules. You know, it really breaks a lot of the things that you teach all season long. This is the way we do it. And then you get to this week and, okay, we're not doing it that way this week. We're going to do it this way. And I thought our guys did a really good job. But, you know, when you face a defense like that, it's going to create problems at certain times. And, and we get, had a couple protection busts. You know, they brought one blitz that they hadn't shown. Um, you know, they just, they do a really good job of doing it. And, you know, there's holes in the defense. And when you find them, you can get big plays. And that's what we did. You know, obviously, Jaquay had a big day uh, uh, catching the ball. We ran the ball efficiently. You know, if you have seven guys in the box, they're going to put eight. If you put eight, they're going to put, they're always going to outnumber you to stop the run. That's kind of what they're built on. But I thought we ran it efficiently when we needed to. And then at the end of the game, we had some big runs to, to, to put it away. Yeah, at the end of the game, you, we talked a couple times this year about your four-minute offense, either the end of the half or the end of the game. And when you got a chance to, you know, it was 21-14 in the fourth quarter, but your offense got the ball back and never gave Seton Hill a chance to to tie it up or do anything. Yeah, it was, and that's really hard to do against that defense to run the football. We got two big first downs, and then at the end we were making sure – I called a couple timeouts just to make sure we had our – I'm not a great math guy – to make sure that we had our math right, that we could go ahead and take the knee and, and, and get out of there. And talk to our guys afterwards. We're never going to apologize for a win. That's – you know, in the PSAC, you got to show up to play every week and give Seton Hill credit, give their coaches credit – you know, on their side that, you know, it could have been easy for them just to show up and, and finish out the season. They didn't do that. They played extremely hard, and they got some talented kids. Yeah, if you looked in their stands and their, uh, their sideline, I mean, that was their, their bowl game, their Super Bowl all wrapped up in one. You know, as we talked about before, there's only about 35 minutes separating the two campuses. Um, every game, even though, you know, California has, uh, has never lost Seton Hill, but, I mean, every game is tough. They, yeah. They've been in every game. And, you know, like I said, that, that fourth quarter, the momentum started shifting. But I thought your team, like I said, did a great job just, you know, taking the couple body blows and, and reacting and, and getting out of there with a the win. Yeah, their coaches did, did a great job. And, and, I, and like I said, I was proud of our guys. We finished the game the way we needed to and, and uh, you know, moving on to the next. And I'm glad, glad you brought up about the math because I'm sitting in the press box. I'm talking with our camera people. And we're trying to figure out <laughs> how, many, how many snaps it's going to take. I'm like, I think the game's over. But... You, you just know, never know when clock stop, starts and stops. Well, the, the thing is, there was about a five-second differential 
to, to where we, we knew we had it. But and Coach Salisbury was the one that said, Coach, we can take a knee here. And I said, hold on, let's make sure of this. Uh, um, but, you know, it, you got to take into account the time that it's going to set for the referee to set the ball. Mm -hmm. and, and we just wanted to make sure that we, you know, that we were right and, and not making a mistake uh, in that situation. And it, it, obviously we were right. Well, I'm glad you called the timeout because I ran out of fingers and toes. And I'm like, well, <laughs> if they're calling a timeout, I, I think we're yeah. close. We'll, we just we'll wanted take to talk about it to make sure. <laughs> we got our charts and we got our things and, and all those things. But at the end of the day, Coach Salisbury was right and, and I was just double checking his math. And one last thing before we go into the, the highlights. Uh, it was a road game, but I mean, your bus drivers had to be happy. It was just down the road because you've had some epic road trips this, this year already. Just non-conference across the state, Shepherd, West Virginia, and, and Clarion's yeah. not exactly across the river. Yeah. No, it, it's, a nice, it's nice that it's that close, but it makes for a long day. You know, we met our guys. We had our guys meet us at the stadium at, at 1.30, and we had a walkthrough. Then we come down to Natale uh, Student Center for, for our team meal before, and then we get on the bus and we go. So you're talking about we're, we're up at the stadium at 1.30 for a 6 o'clock game. It, it makes it a long day for our guys. Um, and so I was proud of the way they handled the trip and, and – you know, it's just these games, it's kind of crazy when you think about it. You got your guys doing a walkthrough at one thirty for a 6 o'clock kick, and then, you know, you sit around until 6 o'clock. And uh, we were there at 6 o'clock, and we'll bring you the highlights you from this past week against uh, Seton Hill, and then we'll look ahead to this week's action in the PSAC. You're watching the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. Mitchell. Hands off McCann once again. McCann, nice spin into the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown, Vulcans. Vulcans able to strike first. And what a spin by Eric McCann. Mitchell gets the snap looking to his left, trying to find someone in the back of the end zone. It's going to be caught for the touchdown. That time, Cam Tarrant able to pull that one in. So just like that, a few plays, and Vulcans march the way right down the field. Gets the snap, looking to his left, firing deep down the field once again. That pass is caught for the touchdown. Vulcan stacking the box, hands it off to Kaquette one more time. Kaquette trying to get that outside angle. He's going to trip up and make his way into the end zone for the touchdown. So the Seton Hill Griffins able to strike in this game. Gets the snap, looking, to, firing towards the end zone. That pass caught in the end zone. Touchdown that time. Mark Bales able to pass that one in. And just like that, 21-0 has turned into than ever before. Haunted Hills Estate Screen Park returns September 9th. Get your tickets now at hauntedhillsestate.com. Grover with the snap, pulling it back, firing downfield, and it's caught there. And that's a slippery rock touchdown. Looking to the end zone, and that's a touchdown for Slippery Rock. The Rock up second and 22. Quick little pass is caught there by the Rock. He's still on his feet trying to switch the field, making Vulcan defenders miss. He picks up the first down a lot more. He has a lot of green in front of him. He's at the Vulcan 20, 15, 10, 5. And that's a Slippery Rock touchdown. Mitchell with the snap, dropping back, firing downfield. And he's caught! It's caught by Derek Lockhart, and the Vulcans are up on the board for six. Snap, Vico's kick is up, 
and it is through the upright. Put three up on the board for the Vulcans. Takes the snap, rolling off to his right. He's gonna try to go himself in the back of the end zone. It's intercepted, intercepted by Cal Yu. It's Dominic Sullivan Jr. intercepting Grover's pass. Takes the snap, drops back. Feeling pressure, steps up, firing, and then another interception. Interception by Cal Yu, and it's Jamal Martin Jr. Grover, again, dropping back. Pressure, firing in the middle of the field, and he's, he catches it. He's wide open. Taylor misses, misses the tackle, and it's an SRU touchdown. Mitchell giving it to Cameron. Cameron. Are they going to say he's in? And that, he is in. It's Isaiah Cameron for the Cal U touchdown. Mitchell takes the snap, dropping back, firing deep, and caught. And that is a Cal U touchdown hauled in nicely by Derek Lockhart. And welcome back to the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV. And Coach, we just saw the highlights from uh, this past weekend. And uh, before we talk about, uh, a lot to talk about this week. It's kind of a busy week here uh, on campus. We're going to take a look at the rest of the scores in the PSAC uh, over this past week again. Um, conference play, we talked ad nauseum about the, the California Seton Hill game. Uh, IEP went up to Edinburgh, won 41 to nothing. Uh, Gannon and Slippery Rock. Slippery Rock pulled away in that game 40 to 14. And then Clarion. Uh, goes to Mercyhurst and wins on a walk-off field goal, 23-21. to And then uh, on the other side of the Susquehanna River, Millersville went to Shepard, scores 55-17, to but it was about 24-17 with five minutes left, and Shepard exploded for, and we're not going to do the math because we just yeah, right. explained <laughs> math isn't our, ex, isn't our expertise, but uh, they get the win 55-17. Uh, Quitstown going to Shippensburg, winning 29-10. to Bloomsburg going to Lock Haven, winning 17-9. to And then uh, Westchester outlasting East Stroudsburg. 24 to 21, coach, and there's one score on here. It's a regional score, not a conference score, but I don't know if you saw it. Uh, I believe it was Concord and Charleston played to a 68-60 game. So that means a team that scored 60 points loses. Statistically, I did, that's I did see that. And I, I, I thought, I was thinking, did they sell a basketball score in there? <laughs> but the basketball season hadn't started yet, so then I figured out it was football. Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I was looking at the stats because first I wanted to see how long that game went. Only went about three hours and 52, only three hours yeah. and 52 minutes for 128 points, but... Uh, I believe one offense had 700 and some yards. The other had 600. So, just for a second, crazy. What would it be like being on the sideline? Miserable. With that? Okay. <laughs> Absolutely miserable. We pride ourselves on playing great defense here, and and, and to be in a ball game like that would would be miserable. Yeah, I saw that, and I'm like, I gotta ask coach about that just to see, because I know as a fan. Well, I don't know. As a fan, that might be great, but I know working the game, that three hours and 52 minutes no. is that's no a good. little long. No good. <laughs> well, that puts the bow on this past week, and uh, we turn the page to this coming week's opponent, and. It's a big week this week. I mean, every week's a big week, but also we have the added, um, I don't know about distraction, but the added uh, festivities of homecoming this week. We'll talk first about the game and then all the uh, periphery stuff. But uh, Sleep Rock, um, Cal, always a big game in terms of conference, regional rankings, playoffs. I know you're going to say it's the next game on the schedule, but first let's break it down on offense. What do they do well? Because they have an exciting Offense. Yeah, they're they're really really good. They're averaging I think just about 430 yards a game offensively. Uh, they've got a senior quarterback that's doing a really really good job. They've got a tailback that's that's rushing for over. I think I just saw four weeks in a row he's had over 100 yards. Um, they're balanced. I think they run for 170 and and, and pass for 240. Or, um, so really explain. And then they have playmakers on the outside. They kind of run an air raid offense where they're inside outside zone and and. You know, mostly spread sets, but they do got a heck of a tight end that that, that creates some problems and some mismatch stuff. Um, they're a really explosive offense, and so we're going to have to do our best this week. And it seems like I watched a little bit of uh, the game this past weekend because, of course, we were the night game. Uh, it just seems like they keep coming at you, yeah, keep they, coming at you. Yeah, you, you know, you got to tackle well. You know, part of their deal and is they get you in space, and, and they've got some dynamic playmakers with the ball in their hand. Uh, and if you don't tackle well, it's you know. It's a 70 yard, you know, a lot of games where you don't, you miss a tackle, you know, the other guys are rounding the ball and, and you get, you know, an eight to 10 yard game, you miss a tackle this week, it, it might go 60 or 70. 
and in a close game, you, I mean, every play counts. Now on the other side of the ball, defensively, what 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 is the key to uh, attacking the defense? Yeah, they're 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 really good. I mean, obviously they've got one loss so far to to a really good football team. They're they're good up front. They've got good linebackers, but they're really strong on the back end. They're going to play man coverage all across the field on us. They're going you know they're not a huge blitz team. They'll bring pressure in, at times. Uh, but they, they stop the run and they play man coverage on the back end. So we, we're going to have to beat man coverage and we're going to have to find a way to run the football successfully. What's the message to the team this week? Because, I mean, this, this big game, uh, yeah. like I said, it's always a big right. It's one of the two games everyone always looks at the schedule, Cal, IEP, Cal, Slippy Rock. So what's yeah, the message? You know, it's about us. You know, I, I talked to our guys yesterday in our team meeting that, you know, a lot of the, a, a lot of the misfortune that we've had this year has been self-inflicted. You know, we've held the lead in, in seven games. Uh, going into the fourth quarter and for whatever reason we just haven't finished and a lot of times it's it's mental breakdowns um, it's it's a missed tackle here it's a missed assignment here that that leads to a drive um, and, and the same thing offensively it's it's we don't execute you know at that time in the fourth quarter that can keep the ball moving and, and, and you know we've lost a couple heartbreakers one in overtime one on a you know, a crazy call that we're not going to get into, um, you know, but it, it, it's about us. We've got to be about our details. I just got done meeting with our coaching staff and said, listen, if we make a mistake of practice, we're repeating it. We're not moving on to the next play until it's perfect. Um, you know, I talked to our coaching staff in meetings this week. I want every kid taking notes on, on mistakes they make, and then I want you to make them read them back to you after the meeting. So if we prepare the way that I know we will, and we're about our details and we're on our assignments, you know, that, that's going to be a big key for us. And it's going to be a big weekend this week. Of course, the game's 3.30, and there's a reason. It's a 3.30 game. It's homecoming week. Um, what's it like as a coaching staff trying to mitigate the distractions around homecoming week? Yeah. Or does it, never, does it not really filter down just because you're so locked in? Yeah, it, it really doesn't. We, we stay on the same schedule every week. You know, there are some things that our guys are going to take part in on campus. And, and that's great. You know, they're here to, to go to college and enjoy the experience. I want them to enjoy homecoming week. Um, you know, but our, what I tell our guys also, our homecoming Saturday after the game. So there are some activities that they're going to take part, just like the regular students do. But when it's time to work, we've, we've got to work. You know, it's an exciting week. I, you know, homecoming is really about the alumni. Being an alumni myself, I have a ton of friends coming back. I got a friend from Florida coming in. I got a friend from New York coming in. I got a friend from Ohio coming in. You know, it seems like a lot of the guys that I played with will be here, and so I know we'll have a great crowd. I was just going to say, it seems like the last couple of homecomings, I mean, you have both sides of the uh, to the end zones uh, filled with for your former players and stuff, and it's yeah. great to see. Um, now, as a former player yourself, I always like to ask this every year. What, what's a favorite memory of yours from a homecoming game that you played in? Whew. You know, just, just the alumni coming back. I think that's, that's always a thing. You know, when, when you're playing and you're a, you know, you play as a freshman and then, you know, those guys, those seniors leave, mm -hmm. is to have those guys that you had a relationship with come back and, and watch you play. You know, and then the second year, you know, so it's just that continuum of building friends. I had a lot of great friends that were, that were seniors when, when I was a freshman. Um, you know, just seeing those guys come back and enjoying and being together is really the memories I have. And we talked about at the top of the show, the weather coach. I'll let you be the weather person that 68 day. 68 degrees and sunny is what it said. So it's going to be a great day. Kickoffs at 3.30. I know they're, they've got things planned up at the tailgate. Um, you know, the, the, it's, it's going to be a great day here in California. Yeah, come down to campus for the parade, then make your way up, get in the tailgate uh, lots uh, and, and party and, and come on in because uh, the last couple home games, if, if you weren't there, shame on you because it's been an electric yeah. electric atmosphere. Once again, 3.30. Um, CTV will have everything on CTV Sports 1 and the PSAC Network. And we'll take one last trip around the PSAC just see the other one games. One last thing. Let's, oh. let's end the tailgate around 320, 325 <laughs> and get into the stadium. Um, you know, the, it, it's been great. But let's get in a little bit earlier. Well, you say the word, Coach. I think I can, uh, I can block out the, uh, the feed so they go. have to come in and watch. They can't, you know, play cornhole and watch our feed. So <laughs> there we'll, you go. We'll, see, we'll do some computer things for you. But, like, that's a direct order from Coach. Get in there by 3. Let's make it 315. 315's easy round number. Now let's look around the conference this week. Um, coming to the uh, tail end of the season here, we talked about Kyle Slippy Rock. Edinburgh travels to Clarion, Mercyhurst travels to Gannon, and Seton Hill travels to IEP. So a lot of close uh, road trips for everybody in the West and over in the East. Uh, Shepard goes to Westchester, Shippensburg goes to Millersville, East Stroudsburg goes to Bloomsburg, and Lockhaven goes to Quitstown in a quick look. At the standings, we talk in the West. Uh, the top four, IEP, Slippery Rock, Gannon, and Cal, all separated by one game, IEP 4-0, and everyone else 3-1 and in the conference. Then over in the PSAC, Shepard 4-0, 7-0, and they have a one-game lead over Quitstown and a two-game lead over Westchester. So it's hard to believe, Coach, that we're coming to the end of October. 
um, homecoming and then seems like probably four weeks of senior days and you know yeah, exactly. It's just, it's just crazy how, how deep we are on the season. But as you said, every one game at a time. Yeah, absolutely. This is a, this is a big one for us because it's the next one, and we're excited about it. And like Coach and I said, be at the stadium by in the stadium by three fifteen. Listen to the band play the the anthem and the fight song. Get you pumped up, and uh, it's going to be a great day for college football. So for Coach Dunn, I'm Gary Smith. We'll see you at the stadium, and if not, we'll see you next week on the Gary Dunn Show right here on CUTV.